trolling me over there. <laughs> On that note, <laughs> welcome. Hey, most drums don't have buttons. Yeah, that's true. It's all these buttons. <laughs> I'm so nervous you're gonna step on your laptop, Jared. Don't be nervous about that. Okay. So to put it. Pray don't that this nervous. thing doesn't creep away on me. Fair, fair. <laughs> <sighs> welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Here on the drum departments, today we have a very hot topic. Yes. Uh, talking about the real truth of electronic drums, what that really oh, means. I thought you were talking about the store. Yeah. Oh, the store. <laughs> Hot topic? I thought you were talking about the hosts. Oh. Could, well, yeah. I mean, come on, dude. Could we, could we get we a need Hot a Topic? Nacho you know? Libre back. Yeah, 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 yeah. He'll, he'll make another appearance. Yeah. He'll make another appearance. <laughs> can we get you like like one you can wear every season? It'd be like a, like a Christmas themed one. Get a Christmas mask. Like a, like, like, like a Valentine's one. We can see what we can do. Hmm. So what is the truth about the uh, truth about electronic drums? Well, is there, is there it's some a bit truth? clickbaity? Yeah, yeah. it's a bit clickbaity. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Everyone's uh, watching like, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm ready, right. ready for the truth. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for the sizzle, guys. Where's the steak? <laughs> it's fair. Mm. Uh, honestly, it's it has everything to do with. It's become like an instrument that was originally like a novelty yeah. or or sort of a, an experiment, mm. and then it sort of became something that that was. Uh, like in the 80s, we played electronic drums because we were trying to compete with all the machines. And so we played electronic drums that sound like the machines. And then in the 90s, technology got better, and they started being things we could play on a regular basis. We're at a point now where they play really well, they sound really good at almost every price point. And the big thing is with all these new drummers out there, and we're getting uh, increasingly in more cramped oh, spaces. Sorry. Right? Hey, we, I got a question for you, Kyle. You know, it's not question time yet. The, Doesn't matter. <laughs> the floor is yours. The Jared. electronic, the, the guitar space. Yeah. The electric guitars versus acoustic. The electric guitar never tried to be an acoustic, at least mm. from my perspective. Mm. Right. Whereas electronic drums, like they're, the companies, from my, per, my, my perspective, is very much let's try and make it as close to yeah. an acoustic kit as possible. Why is that, do you think? I think. There's a feel and a and, and a and a an impact and, and a, a thing that comes when you play an acoustic drum set that's really unique. Uh, but like it's innovation, you know. Who's to say that when they invented the electric guitar that it was going to take off like it did? It's entirely possible. It could have been a, a fad and flopped. Mm. Right. Right. Um, but I will say this: acoustic guitar, electric guitar, fundamentally an acoustic instrument still. Because the the strings. Okay, we do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are the same. Up like yeah, yeah. We, but that no one cares about that. Right? <laughs> we're here for science, Kyle. We're, we're not science. here for the science. We're here for the opinions. <laughs> yeah. Plus, we're not here to talk about exactly. guitar. Who I'm just saying. That well, that is. <laughs> but that's the point. <laughs> yeah. The point is that fundamentally they're the same. I would use the the, the 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 comparable I would use Jared would be acoustic piano versus digital piano, right? Right. And um, you know they've been trying really hard to make digital pianos sound like acoustic pianos, and they're getting much better as well. They're kind of in the same parallel as they are with the drums. But I will say, uh, the drum world has really embraced, for the most part, um, a lot of the advantages electronic drums have over mm -hmm. uh, acoustic drums, which I think a lot of folks out there probably have only electronic drum kits, right? Right. Smaller spaces, smaller stages, volume constraints, and now a product that I think we all feel can get the job done. Now, whether or not that's our favorite choice, it is a very realistic option and a, a choice. I mean, um, you've owned electronic kits, yeah, right? And I know you prefer to play an acoustic set, but I mean, well, what's your take on it? Do you like where they're going? How do you think about the, the sound and feel of a kit like that? Well, it's not that what I, I don't want to say it's like this or that. Okay. Um, I think it's more a matter of this and that. I think there can be both, and that's why I bring up the question uh, related to electric guitars and acoustic guitars. And even pianos, it seems like everyone's kind of cool with that. Mm, but uh, drummers, they're very much like, well, that sucks compared to an acoustic kit, mm. therefore, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And, I, and I, I would just, in some ways, just prefer, how about we just treat this like its own thing yeah. altogether? <laughs> and for me personally, obviously I play more acoustic I grew up playing that. I like that when I hit it, there's no one that th is in between me and that sound being created. Right. Mm -hmm. A module or someone mm -hmm. at a... Like, sound bad, Like right. Jack could actually just, if I play like crap, you just turn me off. Yeah. I have no control. <laughs> I can't like, just like force my crappy playing on anything. That's true. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, so. the big the big thing that the way I see it is electric guitar became part of music. Absolutely. You know, and everyone it was cool. There was lots of songs, the majority of songs for an era, and even now it's got electric guitar in there. That never happened sure. with electronic drums, and even the program spots. Like if you see a band play, where they're like I just watched um, Mike Sleeth, uh, Mike, mm-hmm. Mike Sleeth's videos recently, and he goes out. And plays on this big stage with Sean Mendes where a lot of the songs recorded have no acoustic drums on them at all. Mm-hmm. But yet their live show, there's acoustic drums. Yeah. So even like the cool factor is even amplified for acoustics because when those bands go on stage, they're still playing with acoustics. But that, but what do the people care about? I think, and what, the, what does the band care about is aesthetics. And so if mm. you look at where mm-hmm. Roland has gone and a lot of the other mm-hmm. electronic drum companies, they're trying to make the, the drums aesthetically look Almost like in, incomparable, or that's not the word. Like you can't tell the difference. Interchangeable. I, think, I, I, can, I, I think that's where eventually it's going to go. Where you yeah. look at a kit and you're like, I don't even know if that's electric or acoustic. You it's even, a DW kit or a, well, yeah, the DWE. That just I was just, just going like, to say the new DW yeah. kit. Yeah. Right? yeah, you can't even tell. Yeah, no, you'd, you'd be hard pressed to know if it was acoustic or electric. Right. Yeah. Well, and if you think about the E eighty ten, that revolutionized how people practice. Sure. People are even bringing them to gigs. I know you probably brought them totally, to gigs yeah. a few times. Yeah. Because it still has that acoustic sound, the stage volume still makes a big difference. I know yeah. whenever I played on an electric kit, the bandmates are like, it just feels different on stage, oh, yeah. right? So yeah. I mean, well, I think the hybrid, where you're still getting that acoustic feel, but then you can start playing with the sounds and, and, and adding effects and mood over what you're playing. I, I want to touch back on what Jared said, though, because you're, you're totally right. There is no equal embracing of the instrument on its own merit, no. right? Mm-hmm. And um, it's always in comparison to exactly right, mm-hmm. exactly right. Yeah, you're right. Um, and yeah, we've never quite hit that mark where we're gonna go and say that the uh, and like you said, right? We're at a point now where where music has taken us, where it's it's become a necessity, and the technology's helped us there too. Like I just did two tours that were exclusively on electronic drums. Those gigs would not have happened with a drummer on stage had they not been electronic drum kits. Mm. Mm. And I used kits that looked like acoustic drums. Right. And I asked folks in the audience if they could tell. I asked the average person. Nope. You had a, you had a great no sound idea. person. Likely. We did, mm. yes. Uh, though I will say, these days, it's much easier to walk into that set- setting and just go and make it work almost like it was an acoustic set. We're very close to that now. Right. For mm. sure. But... Uh, you're you're totally right. Even just casting that gig, the conversation is must be electronic drum set player. Mm-hmm. What is that? <laughs> is that a thing now? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> well, it is. I think it's. I think it is yeah, important because fair. if if someone said we want you to play electronic drums and it's this tour with maybe complicated sounds mm. shifting between songs, I don't I don't know enough about the modules where I wouldn't feel comfortable. Yeah. Me just hit. Mm-hmm. Right, plastic drums, but that, and that's wood. totally true. <laughs> yeah. But that's yeah. that's totally true because yeah. you put an acoustic drum set in front of you, you know what it can and can't do, yeah. Yeah. and you're pretty sure if it failed, you'd have a solution in, in your brain. If that yeah. goes down, you're going to be like, I'm I'm totally mm-hmm. lost. Yeah. I don't know what to do. I, I think another thing about uh, electronic drums that's maybe different than maybe maybe piano is similar in that, um, but electronic drums are very much pitched as a practice tool. Um, a lot, whereas yeah, yeah. you don't see that ever being like, oh, get an electric guitar because then you can practice at yeah. night. You know, electronic drums, that's obviously like a huge benefit. That's why I use them. Yeah. But I, I don't, I think from the company's perspective, if we're talking like at around a boardroom table, I would say, stop freaking comparing this <laughs> to that. <laughs> it's its own thing. <laughs> Talk about what's great about it, it in and of itself as opposed to in comparison to. And then, yeah. pe- then you plant it in people's heads. Well, it's that or that. I gotta choose. Hmm. Which one do I like better? Right. I mean, I know. And you even think about <clears throat> what, who buys electric kits. People normally who have no practice space, who live in an apartment, mm. who mm. need it for practice. You know, it's it's that's uh, a reality. I bought. I literally bought a kit from Kyle when he was at Long and McQuaid. <laughs> Did you really? <laughs> yeah. It was. It was you. Yeah, I bought it from, and wow. it, the whole reason it was for practice. I remember you asking me, are you in a basement suite? Was it the TD twelve or the nine? It was the uh, twelve. I think. Okay. It, it, no, it wasn't the nine. No, 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 it wasn't eight. The nine. The eight yeah. I got on Facebook Marketplace or buy and sell, but it was because of practice. That was my need for it. That's yeah. how you marketed mm. it, and I see. Uh, uh, even we've done videos about like the top 10 reasons about why you need electronic mm-hmm. drums and we're just as much to blame. It's like practice, you know, you can play it wherever. I bought my first electronic kit actually 
to take on the road to augment an acoustic set. I oh, took it mm. apart. I took the module, like four rubber pads. I had different hi hat controller and bass room controller. But that was in the '90s when like house music was big, and like yeah. that was mm. the best solution. I could have done like an octopad, but I wanted more options, and it was like, well, for the money, I'll just buy an electronic kit and break it up. Yeah. Right. And it worked great for that. But like you mentioned earlier, I think it was Jared that said it. Um, one of the biggest changes in, in, in a band setting is how, not just how loud an acoustic drum set is, but the energy that comes off an acoustic drum set. Mm-hmm. If you play bass or guitar and you're standing next to the drummer, and, and uh, just turn the volume off on your kit for a sec, uh, uh, if you can. <laughs> Where's the power I swear button? I'm not it's setting like you up, Jared. Tempo. It's one of the faders there, I think, on the little right. Oh, here we go. I think oh, it's one of those. There we go. So just play, right? Yeah. So like you're you're playing, you know, bust off a nice funk groove there, right? And it's like the bass player is like, how do I lock into that? Right. <laughs> well, and and they have to get then all of their monitor right through either their in ears or a wedge. Yeah. yeah. Whereas the sound, they're, they're used to the sound kind of coming from mm-hmm. the room. Yeah. And I just, I don't know how many years ago, we went to a drum fest where there was a Roland artist, I think it was Brian Fraser Moore, who was playing on a Roland kit, and it was sandwiched in between right. these acoustic kit players like Keith Carlock. And I remember, like, Brian's playing was great, and the kit sounds great, but it was this, it was the detriment of mm. the sound system. Yes. They didn't have the right, yeah. the right punch you're from the... You're completely at the mercy. Yeah, you're mm-hmm. completely at mercy. So it felt bad for, for Brian up there. I mean, he killed it. Uh, he played a Weckle tune too, actually. It was uh, Island that. Magic, and it was amazing. But for those who didn't understand why it didn't sound, my, wait, it was just not nearly as good as the acoustic sound. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. There's a great comment, uh, and I think I want to know what you guys think of this. I think, Jared, this kind of touches on something you mentioned. Uh, normalized audio in the YouTube chat t- says, I hate electronic drums. Mm-hmm. I asked why. And his answer <clears throat> is, is very, it makes total sense messing with stuff. Right? It's so that? easy to get into the module and be more concerned about Whoa. twiddling knobs and <laughs> setting up kits than playing the drums. Mm. A drum mm. set just sits there, you play it because that's it. But these things, you know, it's, it works both ways. Like you were playing that song, you're literally exploring the palette of options. Yeah. I, I mean, going off of that, like uh, I've been, since COVID, I've been messing around with a lot of hybrid drumming, like with the SPD and like a KT10 for a bass drum, a like, sure. um, whole bunch of other stuff. And I think I spend as much time hooking in all the triggers and the pads <laughs> as I do setting up the four-piece kit. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you're getting stuff that you can't, or sounds that you can't get on your acoustic kit, but you spend as much time fiddling with it, or you plug the wrong cable into the wrong one, and then it triggers different sounds. Got to go to the mixer, my yeah. headphones. So, can but, I so hear it? this is called the truth of electronic drums. Yeah, right? so, I was just so what is it. the? <laughs> so what is the truth? Yeah. No, but uh, this is what I want to know. If, if you answer it right now. If you, oh really? But if you were a, if you were a company who's saying they're gonna try and like tell someone about electronic drums, what would you say? What would you say the benefits are about electronic drums, not in comparison to? Yeah, good I question. think one of the big ones that's not like talked about enough, or that's even within the modules enough, is the ability to get a good clean drum sound so you can record mm-hmm. yourself yep. and your videos sound awesome. Yep. yep. Pretty mm-hmm. much like push and play. It could be push and play. That is <clears throat> certainly, to me, probably one of the biggest uh, advantages is that immersive experience, mm. especially now with the sound quality they have. They're, mm. they, the one thing that they figured out over the past 10 years was it's not a sound per drum so much. Like, of course, it's one, like a tom sounds like a tom, but they're not, it's not just one sample. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a suite of sounds mm-hmm. to get that, that sort of robust feeling that you would have Again, when you're playing an acoustic set, if you've never mm. played an acoustic set, uh, it gives you that same sort of visceral feel, but you hear it so much cleaner because you don't hear uh, an acoustic drum set perfectly mixed in your ears unless it's fully mic'd. Right. Right. So it is. It's an, it's an advantage in that sense. You really are put right in that song, in that lesson, mm-hmm. in whatever you know. Mm. Um, and the truth is, like you, I think, literally, you started with it is and not. Not or it's that you know we're getting closer mm. to it, mm. but what do you mean closer to it? Because then you're saying that's 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 or if you say that, you've already you already lost. I think the you game. Mean, we're getting closer to. <laughs> yeah, you need more sounds there, Brandon. I know. I think we're becoming more accepting of the fact that these are, and I, even saying this, it's back to the or. These are still a, rel- a relevant instrument today, and and. 
I just think there's got to be more music that focuses on that. I think back to like Michael Shack. He's probably the best, in my opinion, of like showcasing mm, what these yeah. kids can do from the genre, you know? And I bet you that there's producers that look at what he plays on some of his tunes. I'm like, man, I wish I could program that. But it takes a yeah. drummer to do that. Mm. So, uh, you know, Michael's hybriding the, the electronics and the dr acoustic drum approach to this music and making yeah. it all digital, electronic, I don't know. You, I will yeah. say they are shooting themselves in the foot in one way for sure. Um, if you look at these modules now and you go through them, all the sounds that are in there, with the exception of some of this fun stuff you pulled up there, <laughs> yeah. they're really doubling down on good drum sounds. Mm -hmm. So they're really trying to make it the same as. Like even your you first know? preset in here is the absolute hybrid maple. Right. Like top end kit. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So, you know, I think you, you have... Um, I think you're always going to have a space for, the, for them both to have a really, really successful sort of part in a, in a drummer's life, right? But at the end of the day, if you've got to choose one, that's the part, that's where the truth falls. Mm. That's what sucks because, yeah. well, you know. If you're marketing an electronic kit when the majority of music is played on acoustic, yeah. you're not going to say, hey, it's, a, it's right. an old instrument. And you never see that. A, hear it in all these songs. Yeah. You know? You're know, you not going to see it on acoustic guitar. It's like, hey, come and play ACDC on acoustic guitar. You're like, yeah. geez, that's yeah. not... Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <Not the same. laughs> but you can do that in electronic kit, yeah. you know. Well, maybe you know. play easy on it. Yeah. <laughs> and I will say this: like, like from a from a student standpoint, if you're if you out there are a, a beginner or an intermediate drummer and you're learning, man, you've got such an advantage with electronic drums because you can play whenever you want most mm -hmm. of the time. Um, the physical motions, the things you really need to learn, you can totally learn on electronic drum set. Um, the feel is different. Uh, I. I, I was helping out with a battle of the bands, and three of the drummers had never played an acoustic drum set before until they played at that battle of the bands. Wow. Mm -hmm. And they they lost their minds. Did when they, they hit, hit the, the hi-hat too hard? They hit everything. <laughs> well, in, in, in two cases, yeah, the biggest thing. too loud, yeah. and then one person was terrified of the instrument because it it pushed right back. Mm. Yeah. You know, it sound came like here, not here. Mm -hmm, and yeah. and they were like, what what you, what's happening? Yeah. You yeah. know? And and but that's literally a world we're going into now. Yeah. And it's really, really interesting to me because um, we have more and more drummers, we have more and more technically amazing drummers, and we are more and more using electronic drums in that world. Like, you know, I, I think back to like up there, you know, we got the uh, if we can get to that shot there, and we can. Maybe we can. Yeah, awesome. awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, that is a Simmons uh, SDS-5 pad. Mm. Um, it's a single zone pad. It feels like hitting on a tabletop. Yeah. Right? And then we have rubber pads, like over here. You know, and that was sort of the next evolution. Now we're getting down to like what we have in front of us today. These are like a silicone. And they're actually, they're kind of their own thing, I would say. The heads. The, yeah. Like the way it feels. That makes a huge difference in how we interact with the instrument, right? Mm -hmm. The sounds are, are great, but it's like, how does this thing feel under our hands? Well, right? you, you brought up a good point when you showed that drum up there, when you're like, yeah, because that was used. There was songs like Phil Collins, for example. Oh man! Um, and throughout the '80s, that sound was there, and it's just gone. When do you hear those sounds? It's true. Right? Like they're just got. It's like it was like it wasn't cool enough to stick around, or like that fad's gone. Mm. You know, kind of like bell bottoms, man. Where do bell bottoms? Go? <laughs> hey, they're coming back. <laughs> Are they just in up? Europe, man? Really? And they're all over the place. Oh, jeez. Okay. Well, then maybe the sound's <laughs> coming back. I don't know. Well, I mean, <laughs> and Simmons pads have come back too. I mean, the weekend Ricky video. Lewis, yeah. Ricky Lewis is playing with them. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that's true. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. It's I know, here's another thing. It's like if. Because from my perspective, they're trying to get the electronic drums to sound like acoustic. Let's yeah. load in the samples of your Maple Custom, of all right. these yeah. other things. Um, so if they're, if they're so concerned about it sounding like an acoustic drum set, why would they not be more concerned about it not looking like this? Like, I'm, hmm. I'm not trying to like, totally dog on the ammo, but how much more money would it, make, would it cost just to make it look so... Mm. The average person looking at this kit, it, it just looks like a normal drum set. There is a, hmm. there's a psycho, not a psycho It looks like a cyber thing, truck. But it does. Well, it looks <laughs> it like does. a cyber truck. I mean, I, like, I, I put my order for a cyber truck. <laughs> but, uh, but, you know, I don't know about this when it comes to the, the way drummers view equipment and gear. Aesthetics are very important to drummers. There is a unique physical limitation when you play like a, like a five-piece acoustic drum set, right? Yeah. There are certain things that only go in certain places. Mm -hmm. The bass drum takes up this much space. Yeah. And then I'll tell you, the first time I set up an electronic kit, actually it was a converted uh, acoustic kit, 
Um, and I was like, wow, this feels better. A con- sorry, a converted acoustic Yeah, so it, it was, there were, there were acoustic drums. But because of that, because the problem with electronic kits oh, yeah, yeah, in this shape, what, yeah, yeah. what do you do? The first thing you do with, this, with a kit like this, you scrunch it up as tight as it'll go. And that's maybe why, because people <laughs> buy them in apartments. Yeah. 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 Right? I can get that. But, yeah. but honestly, there is something to be said. That is a huge, it, it psychologically makes you think it feels more like a drum set because it's positioned like a drum set. Mm. Like we have a, a VAD that we use in the artist space. And that feels like a drum set to me, you know? It doesn't feel exactly the same, Mm -hmm. but it's just because physically speaking, where the pads sit, where the sizes are, if if I have my eyes closed, it's the same if I'm playing my acoustic set as far as where things fall. Mm -hmm. This, I could do that, but it'll look weird. You know what I mean? Because it'll it'll look spaced out. Well, it'll look gappy. Yeah, exactly. And you're totally right. Is that a word? And and, and it's funny. That's where I got my sweater. Yamaha, yeah. <laughs> At the Gappy. Stuff. <laughs> um, Yamaha was kind enough to send these two kits, and that was one of the first things I said. Uh, the one you're playing, Jared, mm. is their, uh, their, their, a version of their flagship kit, the DTX-10. And, and this one, I believe they said it's very hard to get these right now. It is. Because yeah. they launched it, and they, they couldn't keep them in stock. So now I'm assuming they have some. They do, yeah. So you can buy these. You can. Yeah. What is it? What's that? What type of kit is it? It's a Yamaha DTX-10. A Do you want to know more about that? Yeah, I'd like to know sure. more. Sure. Because it has a textured cellular silicone, which I love. Well done, Jerry. Nice. Yes, yes. Well, the, TCS for the, the win. The, 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 the 909 or something I had years ago, 950. the 950K, 950, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, had these types of heads. Yeah. And they had the ones where you could turn and tune. Yeah, yeah I, I wish right. they still had that. That was kind of nice. Huh? Yeah. Do you, because you could turn the snare wires off. Yeah. I mm-hmm. hate you can't do that now. Yeah. You uh, can, but you have to go through the Yeah, back, the yeah. Brain. Now, do you... Okay, everybody here's played some fashion of like you've probably played some electronic drums in your life. Oh, yeah. yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm, I'm, didn't ask. I'm too young. I'm sitting You're on literally one. playing. <laughs> yeah. oh. uh, the big revolution was mesh heads a long time ago. Right. Yeah. And then Yamaha comes up with this. Which do you prefer? Okay, I know you. I got to say mine here. Definitely the silicone pads. Okay. Mm. I know you're probably going to agree with me on that one. Silicone pads. Well, I feel like Wait. just disagreeing. Now. I know. Oh, <laughs> I know. That's why I wanted to say first. Like you're just copying me. No. Here. Dave uh, and Jared. Point <laughs> counterpoint. We actually agree. No, I, I I like this, although it still is lot, has lots of rebound. It doesn't feel as much like a trampoline as the other yeah, ones. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. But yeah. I, I I don't. I think the other one's fine as well. Like you can go really fast on these. Heads are certainly less trampoliney. They're putting two ply, three yeah. ply heads. Yamaha. You can get this kit with mesh heads. Oh, it really? is a uh, two ply mesh head from Remo, and it feels much like you'd expect based mm. on that. What are your preference? So I kind of am conflicted. Um, I've played mesh heads a ton, and I find I like them for ten minutes, and then I hate them for the rest of the <laughs> of the fifty minutes I play them for. That's the real truth of electronics. Honestly, <laughs> yeah. because because they're just too much of that, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, these I quite like. The only thing I find is if I'm playing at a lower dynamic, I do find, I think it's because of the nature of the way the pad cushions the rebound. Uh, Uh, I don't find that lower 10 to 20% of dynamic range is there. Mm. Even on these new ones? If I hit harder, it's there. Okay. But that like that nice low scoop that you would feel on a, on an on an acoustic drum, if you will, it, it's not quite there. And I do find it works a little better on a mesh head, though. With a mesh head, you're kind of pushing back to keep the rebound from coming coming up to you, right? I don't play ghost notes, so I would never. <laughs> play, <you know. laughs> Yeah, Dave Bray is the beater and the sticks. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Brandon, what about you, man? Yeah, man. I, I would choose mesh. Um, <laughs> like the VAD kits that we have in the uh, in the other studio, those. Those don't feel super trampoliney to me. Mm. Uh, playing silicone, it's super comfortable, but I almost find it's it's like too easy to, like it doesn't feel as real as playing an acoustic drum kit. I would I think the mesh is is closer, at least the newer mesh heads. Interesting. Okay, but and now we're comparing again. Yeah. <laughs> what are we it's here like for? Electronic, it's electric it's guitar <laughs> strings definitely feel different than Dave, acoustic guitar strings. He's comparing. Mesh heads to st- this sil- uh, silicone. Dave just wants he was to talking fight. about. He was talking about playing real drums. It's like it doesn't feel like we're playing. Were you actually drums. saying that? I was saying that. How dare you? How dare you? Oh, <laughs> it's the truth. The real, <laughs> the real truth. <laughs> it's real truth. it's well, my real truth. See, I knew this would be a really good conversation piece because there's a lot to talk about here mm-hmm. and a lot to consider. You know, yeah. um, because you know whether we like it or not, if we look at the overall drum business, this is where it's at. 
Like, if you own mm. a drum shop, this is a very real part of your world. Mm. It used to be 20, 30 percent. It's probably 50 to 60 percent in most stores these days. Mm. Right? Wow. That's, that's where you start going, hold on a sec here. You know, that means more drummers are buying these than acoustic drum sets in many places. Yeah. You know, and I, 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 I hate the stigma of the lesser than because mm. of it. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, you yeah. Know. yeah. Um, another, you oh, sorry. No, no, on. please. Another thing that, uh, uh, that I don't like about electronic drums that I think should change is like, you know when, um, like you have the gas car, right? And then Tesla came out with their car and it's kind of like, Driving, uh, driving around your iPhone or iPad. Mm, yeah. It's like more software and technology than actual, like you care as much about the, the, the hardware of the car. Yeah. I feel like the, and I think it's due to, just due to the amount of money that is generated through the, in, the industry itself, the amount of research and R&D just and innovation doesn't happen at the same rate. But I wonder why, how we don't have a better modules now. Mm, right. You know, something that connects oh, easily, man. that I just like yes. plug my phone in through whatever, a USB-C adapter, and then the, the software boots up. Because I don't know, I don't know what, how powerful this thing is compared to my phone, but my phone's very powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you know? And so I should, be, and then the usability improves so much. So I got like a, a one by three inch screen here. And I don't understand why I have all these knobs and all that. Yeah, you, you know, you make a great point. And I think, you know, we have a couple of years ago, we really only had a handful of companies making electronic drums. So you get what you get, and you don't get upset, right? Mm -hmm. We just and that maybe that's part of the reason why it was it was so much pushback, right? It was like Roland, Yamaha, Alesis, and then maybe a few other kind of OEM manufacturers here and there. Um, <clears throat> but now we're starting to get to a point where we have some companies really investing. Uh, technology and money and, and care into developing that next gen. We've got F Note, we've got Gaeva, we've got uh, Drum Workshop, we've got all these really cool new, much more advanced tech things coming. Um, I think with the big players, I think they plan so far in advance and they play the safe game so often. Like I can tell you what's in that. Like uh, Yamaha made a very safe call with these two kits. Mm -hmm. They went with what they know works. Both of these modules, this is a uh, DTX Pro module, that's a Pro X module, exact same sound set. Mm. Mm -hmm. Nobody does that, right? Like, Roland would never probably ever put two modules out with the same sound set. Yeah. That one only has more functionality and more outputs, right? Um, but I like that idea because what their, their thought process is, we like this sound set, we know it's going to work, we'll just make more of them and bring the price down, right? And that does work in this case. This is a much less expensive kit than a Roland VAD kit, mm. right? What's sure. the price difference? So this kit is like, uh, this version streets for, I think it's 52 US. Let me check my notes here. DTX 10 with TCS pads. Wrong sheet. Go to the other one, Kyle. Uh, yes, there it is. Uh, yeah, 50, about $5,200. The one that Brandon is playing, which is essentially the same, except that it is running a different kick trigger, uh, lesser fancy looking rack, a couple of tom pad sizes and the ride symbols a different size. But the same sounds and, and, and less outputs. This one is uh, $32.99 in, in the US. And then the mesh head versions are less expensive. The silicone pads are more expensive. Oh, really? Yeah. Hmm. I, well, I, I guess I just find like the, the module and the drums, they're not, they, they're not mutually exclusive. Totally. They can be separated. And so I'm just thinking like a business idea. If someone out there is watching right now, <laughs> what you should do Call us first. is you should create like a, just a basic interface, which is kind of a little bit of hardware you have to deal with. Where you have to plug in all of these pads, but then all of that that interface would just connect to your phone in a really simple way, and then you'd build the yeah, software 100%. into the, a new app, and then yeah. you could sell and um, make that software work with every single electronic drum set on the market. It's there, pretty cool. Art. Like, there is a company that makes something uh, a very basic version of that. Uh, it's basically a little box. It's just an interface. It's just a little black box, and it goes USB into a laptop, so you can trigger things like um, Easy Drummer or any any oh, software nice. standalone. Okay. Cool. Uh, the problem is, uh, and the thing that they can't get past, and why you still see these guys, is the latency issue between the, the processing tech. Um, mm. Every engineer I've spoken to tells me that it has to be this way, but they also all work for the big companies. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Right? Um, I mean, I've, you see these LCD screens that are on microwaves. I agree. Yeah, it's right. like there's so many things out there that it's almost but, a standard now. But, so to come out with an LCD screen, and I'm not knocking these companies because there's 
uh, way over my head these decisions. Yeah. Just yeah. For, from a consumer, I don't understand why everything else that I interact with has a nice, clear color screen. Well, the UX is there. It's because the amount of money going into the industry. It is. Like I, I feel, right. I feel yeah. for the companies. Like they're, tr they, I, we know all these. I know. People, it's all like, and they're it's amazing like, oh, companies. Dave, screen that looks better. <laughs> they're like, great. You yeah. Know? Yeah. They, they're, they're watching this. And they're like, uh huh. Yeah, yeah. You guys are geniuses. Yeah, exactly. Why don't yeah. you go back? Just like when people are like, Drummy needs to film a video like this. I'm like, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So I totally get it. And I guess, I guess, yeah. Gava is the first company that's done touchscreen. Yeah, and that is like their module works like uh, a tablet or a phone, yeah. exactly like Jared's saying. The thing that that they discovered to do that. It also has by far the most horsepower under the mm -hmm. hood because it needs three different processors to make that work. Because one yeah. does the screen, because that's cool, but yeah. it's by, by definition <clears throat> hella slow for what you need the kit to do, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So there's a separate chip just doing triggering, mm -hmm. and there's a third chip uh, doing the, all the effects and processing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and you know, that's getting better and faster. And the one thing I will, the other thing I want to add to that is um, the other thing that we're limited by right now, uh, which totally touches on what you're talking about is we're still stuck with MIDI's limited capabilities because all these things are still based in MIDI volumes, you know, 0 to 127 and the layering and all those things. Mm -hmm. That's from like the late 70s. Like MIDI came out in 1982, I think, officially on the market. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're still using the exact same protocol. Now MIDI 2.0 exists and it's infinitely more, uh, you know, a uh, 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 um, Blendable and it's got way more uh, uh, like the the dynamic range is a million times more yeah. than that. Mm. Well, and blue upgraded Bluetooth like that's how DW is doing that. Their new right. kit is is using Bluetooth five, and so they or something. But I'm not yeah. sure if I'm getting that right. But you can reduce the latency down to almost pretty much nothing, right? That's audible to the to the human ear. So I think that's pretty intriguing, and I could mm. see the the future if we can get enough investment. Which means you watching out there, <laughs> you need to convince your neighbor to play drums. You know what I mean? <laughs> you need to convince your brother or more people to play drums because then you know, the world will be better. I Interesting promise. that you went to the pitch. Interesting. <laughs> oh, um, well, that's what we need, man. We it's need, true. The companies need to sell more kits so they can keep innovating and doing right, their thing. Yeah. Um, okay, I want to talk about something else uh, that's gotten much better. The sounds of these kits, right? And yeah. a lot of that technology has occurred in software. So you're exactly right, Jared. Like, the best sounds. Ask anybody in, on, the, on either our platform or on YouTube right now, anyone who's got a good A to D conversion kit, you know, or A to E, they call them, I guess, acoustic to electric. So many of them are running laptops yes. for sounds because yeah. of exactly what you're talking well, about. Well, I saw like Get Good Drums, which is a, they sell sounds that you can Boy, use. am I glad you brought that up. <laughs> Benny just launched a pack. I'm like, he hey, did. I would like to sound like Benny. <laughs> yeah. So, um, <laughs> yeah. It still not sound right, but <laughs> <laughs> closer. Well, quarter notes, you got it. <laughs> like, Thanks. <laughs> Woo! Um, that's a victory, right? Um, the sounds are so much more complex in how they sample because that when you harness the horsepower of your laptop, yeah, whole new world, sure. right? And so I want to play. I'm going to play a little game. So I have a recording. This is actually using Get Good Drums. Oh, nice. So what I've got is I have a clip from a song. Don't worry, we're gonna be all right, I promise. All right, promise. I, promise. I trust you. Dave doesn't <laughs> care about licensing anyway. Yeah, I'm done with it. Bring it up. <laughs> Dave at drumio.com for all of your licensing questions. <laughs> You're done with it, no more. Send all of your lawsuits to him. No more lawsuits. <laughs> 604 897 <laughs> <Don't go laughs> it. There it is. It's on the screen. <laughs> It's on screen. If it's on the screen, it's oh, real, God. everybody. You guys had to prepare that. What, what's, the, what's the number <laughs> actually course. there? I have a hot button. What's Just the number it. there? Did you guys have the number? There's no actually? number. Oh, Which number are you talking there. about? Yeah, I don't have a cell phone anymore. That's you can fax me. <laughs> um, I, pager okay, is probably the best. Okay, so what we've got, this um, we're going to play two clips back to back here. Uh, same section of the song. One is the actual drum track. The other is completely uh, synthetic drums. We have to see if we can tell which is which. Okay, but can you ask her, answer one question Please. first? Is there lots of doctoring happening in that second track? Well, there always is, man. Ah. Anything you hear digitally is going to have <laughs> yeah, some but, compression. But okay. if you were to play it with someone playing live <laughs> with an electric kit and live with an acoustic, I guarantee I'd be able to tell you. I will say this. No, you The style of music, now, and this is an important, you're right, this is an important factor. The style of music that you're going to hear uh, makes it much harder okay. to identify the acoustic drums. Mm. 
Okay, let's hear it. Let's hear it. Let's hear clip one, please. Everybody at home, play along. Are these real or not real drums? We need like a intro. Oh. One. Do we have to guess now? Can we listen nope. to that? Let's hear the other one. Oh. Mm. Sounds like it's mixed differently. They're different. They are different. I will tell you that. But this, this one, the drums sound harder. Why did the drums sound hotter so in the second mix? One well, of the mixes. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta put one of the mixes mm. is the actual recording. Okay. The other oh, is it's a replaced. The other one is a complete sound alike. No. The second one of the two of them, I'm not actually sure. I'm not sure which is which. Um, is uh, not using the same beds. So the guitar mm. is different. It's all different. Oh, okay. Yeah. But the drum parts, one is real, one is not. Brandon, what's your vote? <clears throat> Do you want to hear it again? No. Uh, no, no. I, I, I think listen. that's it. Okay. I think the first one is a recreation and the second one is real. Okay. Really? Yeah. You see, I, I knew that that's what they knew, I would think. So now that I'm choosing <laughs> the opposite. Nice. <laughs> but maybe they knew that I knew they would think that. There's Therefore, a chance. <laughs> maybe they chose a recording where the, Hang the, on the, the real drum was so oh, mechanical. Oh, this is great. I think the first one's real. I, I think the first one's real. And the second one has been doctored, doctored. up. Yeah, yeah. With like. I think the a first one's mix. electric. I think the second <clears> one's real. Yeah, I'd, okay. I'd say the first one's... No, the first one's real. You think the first one's real? I'm with yeah. Brandon on this one. Okay, YouTube says two is real. Neil uh, Kesleto says yeah, two is real. They, Kyle's just tricking all the Normalized okay. audio says all take two. All of you two. watching are going to leave now. Take two real. <laughs> this is bad. All three people that are watching. <laughs> and Jesus, by the way, it's Jesus. Is this your wow. first drum department? Second, Second one. Second Welcome. One. He's nice. behind the camera over there. Uh, you gotta, you gotta like show your face. Yeah, show Say your hello face, to the people. It looks <laughs> like yeah. Come step out in front of the camera. Come Come on, do a wave <laughs> if you want to. No pressure. No pressure. If you listen to this in the podcast, we just saw what he looks like. <laughs> um, okay, it, it's it's split, but it's leaning both in Drumio's member area and on the YouTube's. Uh, I'd say it's split, but most think the drums are real in two. Mm. Well, we should. We should have started a poll. Who's moderating this? Is is it Dylan out there or is it one of you guys? Uh, it's Joy. It's Joy? Yeah. Joy, you could actually do, if you click the little plus, <laughs> you could do a poll next time. Are we doing another one? Who is that? What's this? A poll. That's a poll. It's an X. It's a plus. That's an X. No, so this is a plus. This. It's an X on the side. A poll. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, what's the answer? Tell us what the answer is. I'm uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, what do you oh, mean? I, don't, so I didn't guess. I didn't guess. I don't know which is which. You so, set this up. The answer. Okay, hang on. Okay. I think the original drums are in take one. Oh, you're like Jerry. Yes. But I'm not sure. All right. right. I hope. I don't know. Let's hear it. Drum roll. The correct answer is real drums was the first track. Oh, real drums. Yes. yes. First track, real drums. Second track, get good drums. There you go. Now, to, oh. to, to be completely fair to that test. Let me defend myself. No. <laughs> um, is there a jury? The sounds used. <laughs> In the software are the sounds from the recording. Well, no, so but they still changed them, like Dave said. Yeah, they had to doctor them. There were symbols that were blending. But you had guessed it, man. Hey. You're wrong. I <laughs> believe, man. <laughs> as long as we can all agree that <laughs> Dave was wrong. Yeah. I, I'm allowed to stay, though. So. You're, you're fine, <laughs> well, brother. Yeah, yeah. Look, here's the thing. Here's Assumed. The, you're fine. It's, <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> it's just no Dave. If you're, if you're riding on a crash symbol and yeah. you're on an electric kit, it doesn't matter what kit you're playing on, you can still hear when it's re-triggered. Mm. It just comes through. So that had to have been doctored. And that's where it's like... It wasn't point, doctored. I, cool. I've seen the mix of that. It's really? not doctored. I have that sound pack. It is unreal. Okay, so but it only works for that kind of it works for that kind of music because the original drums are certainly manipulated too, though. But, but you know he, they're gritted. But he played or she or she played that on uh, an acoustic kit, correct? Yes. Yes. So I uh, think that that's a differentiator ooh. as well because if it was originally performed on an electric kit, I think it would sound different. So the original was performed on an acoustic drum set. The second version was completely programmed. Completely programmed. So not even Using played the on sound. an electric kit. No, it was 
programmed. So that, interesting. Yeah, I can we see talking that. about sounds. You put a crash symbol up, and it'll blend into the next crash symbol. How? You put up. Well, when you're programming it, you just no let different. the waves like. Oh, no come, on. Oh, come on, man. Is it no different? No. So you can so you can play. So if Jared would record that track. Yeah. Um, it would sound exactly the same. On the fly, it would sound exactly yes. the same. Yes. Don't touch my kid. <laughs> <laughs> what am I gonna <laughs> scuff up your rubber symbols? <laughs> scuff up the old yeah. rubber there? Ooh, that's um, cool. Brad what what else to talk? Like? I think. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have another test for us, Tom? I only planned one. I only planned one. Yeah. What the heck, man? This is the best part of the segment. This is the all... best segment. This we... is the test. Yeah, what have you been doing with all your extra time? <laughs> <laughs> we got 20 minutes left. Kyle doesn't even work. I can't win. I either talk too much or I don't talk enough. <laughs> yeah, hey, by the way, thanks for everyone on YouTube for setting Kyle straight. <laughs> Yes, Dude, you guys are ruthless. Fun. Everyone on YouTube and everyone in Drum, you guys are you guys and girls are all the best because you know what? You keep everyone honest. You don't yeah. let any oh, yeah. of us get no, away no. with anything, and Heck we no. love you for it. They so. beat me to death on my own birthday. <laughs> we used to have to tell, tell Kyle this stuff, I but you it. are for us. I, so. yeah. I don't even have to do employee performance reviews anymore. This is no, fantastic. leave it this to YouTube. The, this is what the internet thinks of you, Kyle. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Um, no, you handle it with grace, man, and I understand it's a tough thing to balance because oh, you're yeah. the host of the show and yeah. all this, but yes, thank you thanks, to everyone. It's, it's all program. good, and I take it with a great, with, with a great assault and with a grain of humility, so. <laughs> uh, but I, I will also say, if we'd done that same test with pretty much any other style of music, it would have been more obvious. Okay. I chose that particularly because it's hard to tell. Well, it wasn't Jared, hard for me. It was hard for you. <laughs> it's pretty easy for me. Play something. Nice. Right? Play, play something on the kit. Don't hit your lap. All right. What? Now what? So, did you not hear that this... The same velocity, intensity of that symbol. There was nothing different about it, and you don't notice it. He's trying to approve a point that doesn't exist. I'm letting it happen. <laughs> I will allow it. The host says I love yes. this. I love this. Do you guys not hear those? That's the real truth. I we think. need a jury box. All right, everybody. There's some subtle consistencies with the triggers that when uh, you're triggering them. I'm gonna start a poll right saying. now on you. All I'm saying is, in certain styles of music, I know I'm not alone. I know I'm not alone. In certain styles of music, <laughs> um. You would literally be trying to take that out. Yes, and I, I will admit and, that there's times that's where, why. where you I, get I, that same thing I happening. I started a poll, which would you like me? <laughs> 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 Don't let that one go. <laughs> All right, it's up to YouTube now, Dave. <laughs> 50-50, come on guys. <laughs> I so, so for those listening, <laughs> this is Jared's, up. this is my yearly review. Well, <laughs> e e hey, I figured yeah. Elon okay. can do it to let Trump back on, maybe I can do it to kick the yes. off. <laughs> okay, come on, please let me stay, guys. <laughs> Well, this might be That's my last time hey, department. Dave, while you're uh, still here, can you, <laughs> can you grab the bass drum pedal on the shelf, please? Oh, am I helping you guys? Or, are we giving that? stuff away today? We are. That's are what you? I thought I would uh, bring up now. Okay, so <laughs> Yamaha is giving, helping us give stuff Yeah, away? we're giving away one of these. Not this one. This is Jared's actual pedal, so. I don't tell. think it's mine. I have yeah. all mine at home. So you think, yeah. No, dude, I have like four of those. I sent, home. you have three right now. <laughs> 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 so someone took it. Tyson yeah. has my yeah, garage Tyson code. Tyson was in the bushes waiting for you to leave this morning. He's yes. like, <clears throat> well, he has so my garage code. <laughs> Dave, it's sixty percent. No. <laughs> yes. Are, yes. Keep are... me, keep me, guys. You, you know, you know. Someone's got to keep this guy in check. So we're we giving away a new one. Dave for CEO. Oh. Oh. If that's what you guys hey, want. let's put a vote on. Let's put a vote I on. I mean, I'll come back in a year just like Bob Iger just had to do for the other CEO of Disney. <laughs> oh, I saw that. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's, that, that's not uncommon, though. That happened at Starbucks, too. Yeah. Just kidding. I'm coming back. Everyone gets raises, all right? There you go. <laughs> all right. It's well, easy, Jim. Now, what were we going to do? I think we're going to talk about this bass drum pedal. Oh, yeah. What are we doing here? We're giving not this one away, but a brand new one. Brand spanking new one nice. in the box. This yeah. is a Yamaha FP9 bass drum pedal. Uh, borrowing <clears throat> much of their styling details coming from their motorcycle division. Because Yamaha. Choose Yamaha if you want a countertop, blender, drum set, guitar, motorcycle, or boat. 
Or yeah. pedal. Or, they make or pedal. Or bass drum pedal. Yeah. 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 That's kind of a cool, uh, it's blue on the bottom too. I like that. Nice, that's a neat design touch. Yeah, mm -hmm. I like it. You also like it because it's drumming on blue, don't you? <laughs> it is. And uh, it's, this is the best pedal I've ever played. You know Hands what? Down. I agree. Mm -hmm. Wow, no small that's praise great. there. Wow. It's my favorite pedal. It's the best pedal. Yeah. Do, do you have one too? I do. Really? Yeah, yeah. I play one too. I don't Brandon? play one. I definitely don't play one. <laughs> what do you play? <laughs> I play a, a 5,000. Oh, those are gross. Yeah, yeah. Your foot. yeah. All like the, the... Gonna get a disease with your foot? <laughs> well, it's like, yeah. it's like, why do, they, why do they have all of those like letters like carved into it? Yeah. It's not even smooth. It's like tattooed at the yeah. bottom of your foot. It's like yeah. a ski jump here. Yeah. You can just slide right I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. We should just fight about the FP9 next week. Sure. <laughs> all right. Two Based teams. Pedals. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that would be forever, man. Holy cow. Yeah, bring out the old wrestling gear. And yeah. Oh, yeah. Throw down. Nacho yes, I'm still funny. allowed on. Nacho returns. Uh, yeah, no, you're oh, still. Yeah, it says, come on, Dave, we'd love to have this pedal. <sighs> so so it says Bruno. But that's also the guy that thinks he should be CEO. I don't know if I'm happier that there's 62 people that want me to stay <laughs> or that there's 38% that want me to leave. Well, hey, it's not done yet. It's not done. There's still time. <laughs> Let's wait until the email goes out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, how, how are we giving this away? Alex Sydney says, uh, poll for best bass drum pedal. No. That's too, there's too many. It's got to be a yes or no. Yeah. Just, or we could do DW yeah. or yeah. Yamaha. We could do our DW. Drum or, our DW 5000 stupid, yes or no. <laughs> no or no. Nice. Or yes or yes. Yeah, putting that one out. <laughs> no, those, those pedals, I mean, you know, that's why they make so many pedals, right? But that's also why this one's the best. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I mean, pedals, it's it's so a personal subjective. preference. Yeah, so so it is. I actually own like four different pedals, and uh, this is the one I take out most often, but frankly, the one I practice on is not this pedal. I have a different one. I have a, a, a 9500 at home. I, think, uh, I hey. think Bruno should get the pedal. Who are you giving it to? Well, we could. What would it? But normally, we would give this away to our members. Oh, I think we should go to the members. We can't. So for those of you who don't know, you're watching on YouTube, you're like, Drumio is just like a really cool YouTube channel. We actually have an entirely different place on the internet that we hang out with our members and our students, and it's the best place ever. Yeah. And um, if you haven't checked it out, you can go to drumio.com slash trial, or you can find one of the members maybe online, and they have actual, um, they can give you a pass. A little pass, yeah, a little pass um, A free gift for a little while, and you could join us. And then maybe you could uh, win some of this cool stuff. This pedal's so smooth. Is, uh, is Dave allowed there? No, Dave no. is also not in there, so that's a positive. <laughs> Sign up now, you don't get to see Dave. So oh, you know what? Uh, there was, uh, I, ha I was having a conversation earlier today with one of our, uh, one of our team members. While you were cleaning like, the desk? <laughs> uh, you know, we could do that afterwards, but I oh, I we have people that. for that. We have people. Um, certainly not me. Uh, uh, Black Friday's coming up. Right. Yeah. And uh, we have uh, we have a crazy offer coming up. Yes. Check out Drummy on Friday. It's going to be... Mm. Five days away, guys. It is. It is <clears throat> actually, I'm going to say it this way. Because I know if you guys are anything like me at all, I've already gotten like, check out the 17 days to Black Friday special. You know? The one that we have coming on Friday is worthy of a Black Friday special. Well, we... I can we say that don't, We don't... Buy into Black Friday month or all that BS. It's no, like, no, no. You know, we have like four days where we're running some stuff yeah. that's like pretty epic. So, uh, members, you're going to love it. And anyone watching on YouTube, make sure you come to Drumio or just watch the social channels and things like that. And, and um, we'll post a link, but don't miss it. Uh, Normalized Audio says these guys are scared to have Steve Holmes on the show. Nope. Steve Bring him. We're not scared of anyone on the mm -mm. show. <laughs> I know lot. Steve Holmes. He's a nice guy. There you go. Not scared then, I, I think guess. I've, I've watched his videos. He's a very good drummer. Doesn't he do like Holmes on Holmes? Holmes? No, that's Mike Holmes. <laughs> <laughs> Mike Holmes. Yeah, make it right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think he's telling you, make it right. Oh, sorry, yeah. Steve, yeah. <laughs> Steve is a very good drummer. And maybe he doesn't like Drumio, and that's fine. Lots of people don't like Drumio because of Dave. <laughs> that's funny. <laughs> so funny. We welcome all perspectives uh, on the show. I think it's because of me that they don't like Drumio, unfortunately. <laughs> that's, uh -huh. But that's fine. You can't you can't win them all. No, nope. <laughs> just win hopefully all most of them. Steve, yeah. you're welcome to come. Speaking on. of winning, <laughs> let's see how Dave's doing here. Oh, Dave. Who not, should we get uh, on drum? Who would be the most controversial <laughs> guest to have on the drum department? I'd love to know um, whether you're whether oh. you're uh, posting in the chat or or uh, in the comments later. 
Let us know. Dave Atkinson. Dave Atkinson. Yeah, Dave. Uh, Mike, Mike Johnson. <laughs> oh, Mike Johnson. Mike Johnson. He, he'd be great. He'd be awesome. Yeah. You're, I'm trying to think of who would be controversial. Open, open invite. I don't think Mike Johnson's going to come on here and be controversial. No. no. Tommy Igo <laughs> might. We've, yeah, already, that's, yeah. we've already had him out, though. Tommy would be fun. Yeah. We, gotta, we could talk about paradiddles. We get... You want controversy? We get no. Tommy Igo and Bruce Becker to discuss rudiments for an hour. And John Wooten. And John Wooten. Yeah, oh, that would sure. be good. That would be like a like a like a like a death match. We need a drum department full week. We'll have a therapist. Ralph Schumacher. Do you mean like Michael Kanye Schumacher's West. brother? <laughs> Kanye West. So how are we giving away this pedal, man? <laughs> yeah, we're uh, we're on to something. No, no, else. hang on, we're, hang we're, on. We've moved, we've moved past. Someone at, said Lars Ulrich. No, we're looking for drummers. Oh, oh come Kyle. on, man. Come on, he's <sighs> he's totally invited. It was so easy. I've even tried. It to It was get right out. there. It was right there. We're still trying. Lars, don't worry. Kyle won't be here <laughs> no, when you come. Definitely not. <laughs> neither <laughs> will Dave. Neither will Dave. Dave. Neither will I. Of course, will no. Ferrell. That'd Apparently be great. Will be here, Dave. Carmine would be fun. Sixty-seven percent. Tommy Lee, yes. that would, would Tommy Lee be controversial? It'd be fun. No, we want one like someone that absolutely hates like music education or something. Mm. Like someone who, who just hates music education. <laughs> I know, it's, gotta, it's, gotta it's like be... saying you hate puppies. <laughs> yeah. There's people that don't like puppies. I well, okay, them. okay, but they have no yeah. souls. Like dude. someone, like you, like someone who's like like only learn like like by yourself, like don't take lessons or that kind of thing? Or that just like, you know, I learned this, I'm not sharing it because oh, this is mine. Oh, I like that. You know, I don't want anyone, people don't learn through video. They need Tommy Chong. So we can bring, uh, bring a guitarist. This is great. <laughs> really, en really enjoying these suggestions. Oh, Ricardo Merlini would be great. Fred Armisen, yeah, that'd be good. Uh, Ed, Ed says Mike Portnoy, he'd be great to have out. Mike yes. Portnoy, yeah, yeah, yeah. There's definitely some, yeah. have been some controversy. Someone says we're straying a little. I kind of agree with that. Because they want a prize. All right, the pedal. To <laughs> Mike the Portnoy, the first question is, so, Dream Theater, what happened? All right. Kyle, who are we giving this pedal to? We can't keep it. Sorry. <laughs> it was right there. It was right there. <sighs> We're going to give the pedal away to one of our beloved Drumeo members. All right, who's winning it? So if you want to win, every week we give away something cool to our members. We do it live. We're also going to give away something to the YouTube channel, so don't you worry. We got a prize for you guys coming up right away. Uh, we're going to. Uh, okay, so I got. Amongst the other flamage I took, I should not do skill testing questions or any of those things. I got, I got flame for that. So it's going to be random again. It's going to be something totally random. Uh, pick a number, Dave, between one and two. No, uh, three. <laughs> three. Between one and. Seven. Five. That was five, everybody. Five. The winner is in the Drumeo chat. <laughs> Cut. Five, man. It's just so counting good. to five. Sorry. It just this is killing me. Uh, I'm so glad this isn't live. Um, <laughs> The Lost Drum Key. Yay. You have won. Congratulations. A brand new FP9 pedal from Yamaha. The Lost Drum Key. Please e email me at krad at drumme.com with your information. We'll get that pedal sent off to you. Toot sweet. Congrats. And it'll be a new one, not yes. this one. Yeah, it won't be that one. Hey, that, those beaters wear out. All right, really Dave. Really uh, I'm just checking in Did on it? your status yeah, here. Flat note. Just gonna make sure we've got the most up to date information here. Do I on still your, live to see another day? On your uh, oh, fate. On the drum department. 164 votes, man. It's holding okay. consistently at 63. We're gonna end the poll, I think. Thank you, thank Let's you, see. thank you. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, once a year, we'll do a poll. Um, oh yeah. So no, 63 percent, 36 percent, yes. 165 okay. votes. I'd say that's definitive. Yeah, that's definitive. <laughs> still, I gotta win that 37 percent. All right. <laughs> We are going to give away a one year's membership now to Drumeo. You can come okay. hang out with us. We have a whole documentary series on electronic drums. We cover pretty much everything there is to know okay, about okay, the history of electronic drums. Do you remember when you asked him if he had played electronic drums before? And he had literally done the history of electronic drums. <laughs> Why are you cleaning all the time? <laughs> and that can clean this for he's, you, bud. He's coping. <laughs> it's like his, his bar stool. <laughs> Uh, all right. <laughs> I don't even know what I was talking about now. You're giving away a membership to YouTube. That's what it was. <laughs> One year membership to Drumeo. You Come hang out screen? with us. Win cool things. Learn to play the drums. 
See, Dave, polish my laptop screen. Uh, all right. Um, Number who, picking? Uh, one, between one and five. Three. Three. Oh, great choice. Normalized audio. Normalized nice. audio. Nice. There you go. You Welcome have won on. a one-year membership to Dromeo. Please email me at krad at dromeo.com with your information. We will get you set up with a one-year membership. And that even includes, you get to hang out with our drumming community, our piano community, our singing community, our guitar community, our community community. And normalizing audio is way easier on electronic trials. My goodness, mm. that's so true. Well done. Man. And on that bombshell, Jack's just going nuts with this. He's like, what am I going to do with this? <laughs> I really, can you play us out with something different than that track? I don't that? know how to change it. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, just, I could turn the knob, but then something else is Try it. Happen. Let's see what happens. Okay, hold on. Okay, press Maybe. play. Let's or go or whatever. Well, that's nice. No. no. Not as, as I hope. <laughs> how do no. I change? Oh, fast blast. That's what you should play. <laughs> I feel like he doesn't have a, a good option here. How do? You, isn't there not songs in here? There are. Somewhere. I don't know. Settings. Anyways. So, um, oh, here we go. Hey, huge thanks to Yamaha. Yes, huge yeah. thanks to Yamaha. For the giveaway and for letting us have these kits. All right, I'm going to have you guys jam out whatever that is. Okay, Brandon, go ahead. Uh, so what we're going to oh, do is wow. we're going to say goodbye to all of you out there in uh, YouTube and Facebook land. Those of you in the members area, hang tight. We're going to answer your questions next. All right, everybody, see you next week.